We need a lot of energy here at the farm. This is costing us an arm and a leg. The question was, could we use something on the farm at a relatively cheap cost, which would create heat? It was always interesting seeing one of our cow sheds around the back of the farm, where we'd, um, as farmers, had done a DIY, like putting the water pipe in. Um, and we put it in pretty shallow because the ground was quite tough and we were tired that day. And so we laid the pipe in shallow just below the, below the surface. It was always interesting in the winter months, especially those cold days, how much um, steam was coming off, those, off that water tank where the cattle were drinking. How could we turn that little accident into something actually was designed to do just that, to heat water on the farm using the heat created from this stuff here right below us. It was getting a bit tired and we were going to re-concrete this floor. So it seemed such an opportunity that we could experiment by putting water pipe under this, under this yard floor, shallow. This stuff, in the summertime, we take it out of the fields when we grow crops, like wheat, barley, that kind of thing, and in the wintertime use this stuff to give our cows bedding for sit sitting down on. And because cows, you know, they haven't got manners uh, and they tend to poo and pee everywhere, um, so we have to keep putting more of this stuff down. Just below it is like straw, poo and pee. And the three things come together and you create what we call, in farming terms, muck. And the further down we go, we start to see composting effects. And that energy which is locked in that straw and the poo and the pee, um, uh, that is, is the energy is being unlocked. So the energy starts from the sun, it goes into the plant, it's locked in the plant, but at some point that energy has to come back out of that plant again. And that's what's happening here right now. Near on 45 degrees, there you go. All of the pipe work in the milking parlour, anything what milk goes through, needs to be cleaned every time. So you need hot water for that. So we thought, well, how much water do we need? 1,000 litres. How many times a day does it heat up? Twice. What's the temperature? 85 degrees. We wanted to get 1,000 litres of water from this yard into that tank. So we then used pi to calculate the volume inside the pipe because we know also knew that we needed to use quite small pipe to absorb the heat. We laid one mile of water pipe here under this, under this ground. The water sitting under the muck, it well and truly heats the water up. It was coming out just over 40 degrees. But then we knew that we only got 40 degrees and we need 80 degrees. It's like, what else have we got which is free and available in the milking parlour, what could get that, that water um, even hotter. When the water needs to be used uh, for the dairy, it needs all that water instantly. So what we did is we brought in what we call an accumulator tank. Here is our same pipe, the blue pipe, water coming in. So from this tank, we're now still 35, 40 degrees here, so we're still a long way off our 85 degrees. So what we did was stage two, which was using the wasted heat from when you cool milk. When you're milking cows, coming out of the cow and gone through some pipes is about 35 degrees. So it's a little bit less in body temperature. Unless you're using that milk immediately, the milk will go off quite quickly if you don't cool it down rapidly. Cooling it down rapidly you need to use the same effect as what everybody has in their kitchen, which is a fridge or a freezer. Well, with a fridge, if you ever put your hand behind a fridge, you can feel the heat coming off it. And this is what was happening here on a larger scale, is that we were creating heat from cooling our milk and just throwing it out into the atmosphere. When we actually took the temperature of what, what was coming off here, it's actually 70 odd degrees. So this is now an opportunity to get our water from 35 degrees to about 70. There's some magic in here which a lot of us really don't understand. But I'll give it my best shot. In this, in this little vessel here is a liquid, uh, a refrigerant liquid. So if you know like things like PSI, like you know maybe you've pumped your car tire up and you pump it up to 
35 PSI or something like that. Well, in here we've got 250. The liquid is forced through this pipe and it goes into uh, this tank here. Now, this is how we co cool our milk at Fen Farm. So we've got, it's called an ice bank. As the pipe gets into the ice bank, the size of the pipe is like, um, goes from something like that to something like that. What that does is create a pressure drop. So the pressurized pipe, 250 PSI, it goes into a bigger pipe, it drops down to about 40 PSI. When you have pressure drop, you get temperature drop. So think of it like a uh, deodorant can. So inside that can, it's pressurized. But as soon as you release the pressure, it becomes very cold. So if you spray a little bit of deodorant on yourself, it feels really cold. And what that's doing is, as the pressure drops, the temperature drops as well. The temperature dropping absorbs the heat. So it pulls heat from the water in here out of the water, once the heat is taken out, the water drops to a point where eventually it becomes ice. In here we have a compressor. Compressors work by sucking in volume into a very small space. We're taking minimal amount of temperature from that water, from the ice water. We're talking, you know, like a removal of a, a, a couple of degrees probably. But when you put a couple of degrees over a large area into a small area, we're actually making, making about 70 degrees. So from the compressor, this is the smart bit, it then heads up to what we have here, which is heat exchangers. Going in, 45 degrees. Coming out, 72 degrees. So what it's doing is going through some very thin plates. The other side of that plate is, lo and behold, the same water which is coming out of our cow shed, which is about 35 degrees. So it just goes round in a loop. The heat, what was from this big tank of icy water, we've absorbed that, we put it into this box, and then we pass that heat on to the water which we want to actually get hot to wash the milking parlor. So in effect, we've got two loops going on. We've got the loop of cooling icy water to cool our milk, and we've got the loop of the hot water from the cow shed heating the water to wash our milking parlor. We've got to 77 degrees, but we're still after that last little bit of heat. The last little bit of heat does come from an element, but because it's done during the day, it's heated up while we're not milking, we get that electric from um, our solar PV system. So the sun then uh, creates electricity, the electricity then it heats the element, a bit like a kettle in the bottom of the tank here. And then that takes us up to that sort of 80, 85 degrees sort of temperature, which we're after heating water it requires far more energy when it's cold to when it's warm so all of the hard work is done at the beginning which is really done from cow poo um, so it's our cow poo powered heat exchange system we did this like a couple of three years ago and it's been working like clockwork every day ever since it also like starts to make you think well you know the possibilities of like what you can do with wasted heat out of muck. It doesn't have to be cows, it could be poultry, pigs, you know, anywhere where there's like a, a, a process of like breakdown of energy, um, which is being lost, composting, anything, it can, it will create heat. And providing you do it in a way where you can harness that heat, you know, you've got free energy just waiting to be taken away. And it's also obviously better for the environment as well.